Before any of this ever happened, I thought I knew what it was to be grateful. To wake up in the morning happy and satisfied and thankful for the day ahead. This is the kind of thing that happens to other people. Sad people. Unhealthy people. It doesn't happen to you. You have things to do. Or not do. You might just sit around on the couch all weekend watching Netflix recommendations, but you are certainly, most definitely not in the market for a tragedy. For an upheaval. For the roar of the earth as it cracks and gives way beneath your feet. No, that's something that happens to someone else. Until it happens to you. I'm aware sometimes that we are these other people. We're a story that gets told over coffee, met with a sad shaking of heads and a shrug of the shoulders. Eventually though, life goes on for everyone else and their worlds spin on even when yours is stopped or is just temporarily idling on its axis. Aaron doesn't look like a cancer patient. Strangers seldom notice the faint scar spanning a half loop from behind his right ear to the middle of his forehead. But 10 nights a month, he throws back two chemo pills and I feel the effects blazing through his body at night. Every two months, I sit in a generic waiting room while they scan his brain with an MRI. We're powerless to prevent it, but we're not left powerless. The shit has one redeeming quality. Its ability to highlight the very best in us, the very best in others. Our happy is happier. Our sadness is more poignant. Our lives are more intense in every way, lived in contrast. This isn't a cancer story. It's a love story. All of it. The whole thing. Even the part where cancer appears like an unexpected plot twist or a diabolical villain. All of the cliched things that people say about life are true and become even truer when something like this happens. It is precious and brief and cruel and sweet, even if it isn't fair.